Research methods, primary data. Using primary data means collecting them firsthand. There are many ways to do this, such as observing and taking good notes, recording interviews, or measuring activities and behaviours, and surveys. The information that can be collected is endless, so it's important to decide carefully which method to use. We will now discuss the main methods of collecting primary data. Surveys are useful for collecting large amounts of data and for conducting quantitative and qualitative analyses on the data collected. There are advantages to creating and using a survey. It is inexpensive. Once the survey has been created, the result will depend on the number of respondents. It is an effective way to structure a research study, especially in the analysis stage of a question on the territory or its impact. Asking many people the same questions helps understand whether everyone sees things the same way or if there are differences. Furthermore, the respondents have time to think and this can improve the quality of the answers. However, surveys have some weaknesses. First of all, they must be created carefully because a poorly designed survey, for example with questions that are too complex and difficult to analyse later, is of little use, and it's not possible to work with the answers. Furthermore, a survey may not be appealing, as convincing people to fill in yet another survey is not easy. Furthermore, the survey is an impersonal method, as you do not see who answers the questions, so problems can arise, however remediable, relating to authenticity. Here are some tips for creating a good survey. Ask yourself who is your target population, a neighbourhood, employees of a company, a school. Knowing this helps us understand how many have responded, for example as a percentage. Provide clear instructions for filling out the survey in clear and comprehensible language. Try to understand which variables you want to examine to make the questions effective. Choose whether to use closed or open questions. Closed questions are easier to manage. One must simply know the right scale to apply. For example, completely agree, completely disagree, very important, not important, from one to five. Instead, open questions work well when collecting a variety of information, such as gathering information on experiences. Take a look at online tools that help create surveys like Lime Survey, Survey Monkey, Google Forms. Interviews are very useful for gathering specific information, which maybe only some people know, or to gather very in-depth knowledge. This is the most flexible tool, because when you have a person in front of you, you can ask more questions and connected follow-up questions. This dynamism is not permitted, for example, in surveys. Furthermore, since the respondent is facing you, you can better understand his or her reactions and you can show empathy. On the other hand, interviews are more complex to organise and more difficult to analyse, to translate the respondent's answers into results. In addition, the respondent's personality can be misleading. Therefore, try to stay focused on the questions and answers you need. Interviews can be structured, semi-structured or not structured or they can be based on a rough framework of questions. A precise framework is useful if there are many interviews and to obtain precise answers, while an open framework allows the respondents to express themselves freely. You can conduct a face-to-face -face interview in person or even on the phone or on Skype. The latter tend to be generally shorter and it's better to provide the questions to the respondent beforehand. If the interview is not recorded, take lots of notes. If you intend to record it, ask the respondent for consent. At the end, the interviews must be transcribed and analysed. If it's a long interview, divide the text by types of content, macro themes, so that you can ascertain whether there are sub-themes within the themes. Detached or engaged observation is a primary data collection method, particularly useful for observing the conditions of particular places, events and activities and is very useful for the ethnography of a particular area or a social group. 
Observation is the best method when it comes to understanding a territory as a whole. Directly observing the conditions of a territory and the actions of people and groups can be more effective, for example, than an interview because one remains more neutral regarding the subject of the research. Moreover, different preliminary information is obtained by observation, which can then be looked at in more depth with other methods, such as interviews. Observation, however, takes time and may be of little use if the context in question changes often. Observation can be pure, the observer does not interact with the context or subject, or engaged, the observer interacts with the subjects of the area for a better understanding. It is always useful to make a list of things or behaviours to observe before going to the area of study. Create a way to collect the information in a structured form. For example, count how many people use a certain service at a certain time. Create a list of relevant details about a work site or remediation site. And try to gain access to the sites to be observed. A focus group is a type of group interview that focuses on the in-depth analysis of a given subject area not only through questioning the different participants, but also through the interaction between the participants themselves. Generally, the subjects chosen for a focus group have a specific understanding or interest in the subject under analysis. The focus group combines the flexibility of interviews with the interactions between participants and is perfect for the investigation of a subject or an issue in depth to bring out common or contrasting points of view. However, a focus group is not easy to organise and it is not easy to manage in the interactions between the participants and the risks of them conditioning each other. Therefore, we must be good moderators and we must avoid certain participants from dominating the discussion over others who are perhaps less inclined to speak. It's always important to clarify the objective of the focus group, the purpose for which the participants attending and what is sought to be understood. Try to also bring out the diversity and the divergent points of view or those not initially foreseen by your questions. The focus group is made for this. Diaries or records are a particular form of observation that allow for the collection of very detailed information about a specific behaviour. Let's take, for example, the observation of a public transport route. It is possible to create and fill out a record to document the experience, from the waiting area to how many people were waiting, to the level of cleanliness, the departure and arrival time, etc and also to standardise it and provide it to other users so that they can document their experience. If a large part of the information collected is in written form, the systematic and quantitative analysis of the contents, that is, content analysis, can be very effective in understanding if there are recurring elements. It is possible, for example, to collect all the articles of an online newspaper on a specific subject and to insert the entire text into an online software to understand which elements are recurring and common, perhaps over time. Now it's your turn. Choose which primary data collection method you want to use carefully based on the purpose of your research and start your field research.